unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Lately, the Lord has been speaking to me about revisiting a few things that have not so much been touching. Not as much as revisit but emphasizing certain things that I've realized for some time have not been touching concerning the message praise the Lord Jesus if you have noticed that for the past five, six, seven months I've been so much in the line of faith the distinctions of the ministration of the spirit and many things like that uh, but I'd not so much gone so uh, the way of touching uh, the most intricate part of the message that we preach and why we preach the message that we preach and so this year the Lord spoke to me in these few sessions I will be touching a few important things one because I don't want to take it for granted that everybody understands this and that we have many new people that have joined over the past few months and I believe that not many of them are acquainted to these things if you have heard me share the, partly it will be maybe 30% of what you've heard, but I'm going to go a bit deeper to explore and expound certain things pertaining the message. The Bible says, those of you who read your Bibles, that we are the sheep of his pasture, right? We are the sheep of his what? Pasture. And pasture here means message. We are the sheep of his message. We're not just the sheep of Almighty God, but we're the sheep of a particular kind of message. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because without a message, you cannot have a burden. And without a burden, you can't reconcile truth with purpose. Somebody say amen. What makes us purposeful ministers is because the burden we carry is of a message. Not a zeal that is without knowledge, but a zeal that carries knowledge. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the Bible says that you are the sheep of his pasture. In other words, God owns his message. You are yes sheep, but of his pasture, his teaching, his instruction. Praise the Lord Jesus. It is possible to walk the life of salvation and be taught by men. The Bible says in the last days the spirit speaks expressly that men shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And they shall present them even as the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So not everything that stands on the altar is truth. Of course, many of us weigh truth against logic and reason. Things that our souls can agree with, depending on our human experiences. But the word of God is deeper than reason. If you go into a place of reasoning, you can't reason the gospel. I was sharing even with the men recently, I told them, if you read the Gospels very well, Jesus would appear so unreasonable. Praise the Lord. A woman comes with a sick child, he ignores the woman. And the Bible says, and Jesus refused to give her attention. And you're like, but, but, but this is the Son of God, how rude, how proud. You can mention all, you understand? But there's a mind of the Spirit behind everything that Jesus said and did. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, because we are sheep of his pasture, the message has to be clear. What is the message of the New Testament dispensation? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. In Genesis chapter 5, the Bible speaks of, I think from the 28th verse, the Bible speaks of a generation from Adam, right? And in the 28th verse, if you'll open there with me, the Bible speaks of a man called Lamech. The Bible says he lived 182 years and he begat a son and the son he begat he called Noah saying this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cast. 
So Noah came as a minister of comfort. If you are a reader of Hebrew, the name Lamech means powerful. Praise the Lord. And the name Noah means rest. So power begets rest. Men which walk in the power of God are rested. Somebody say amen. And it is the very Noah with whom is rest that finds grace. Somebody say amen. The Bible says Noah found grace. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God called him, he says, you are righteous in mine eyes. I see thee as righteous. He found grace in the eyes of God. I love the way the message version says it. The message version says, Noah was different. God liked what he saw in Noah. What he saw in, in, in Noah, in, in. That means it was not something outside. It was something within Noah that the Lord saw. And he liked it. Somebody say amen. If you go back to the story, the, the earth was desperately wicked. And the Bible says, and it repented God that he had made man. How many of you remember that story? It repented God that he had made man. Now I want you to understand when the Bible speaks of repenting in this instance. And let me also touch this part. Say, hey, but Manange, how can God repent? Oh, how can God regret? Okay. In this instance, it's the act. In fact, when you read Hebrew, you realize it's more of the attitude of God changed toward man. He didn't repent in purpose. He repented in attitude. His attitude toward man changed. But his purpose towards the creation of man never changed. Otherwise, you'd be putting him in your time series of a God adopting to time to just discover that man has fallen and become wicked. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the present and the future. He knew it even before it began. So I don't think that it was a surprise to God that mankind became wicked. No. He knew the story from the beginning. Hallelujah. They are called plans. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to make you prosper, not to harm you. Not, even if you're walking this earth, there are plans God has for your life. And he has told you what they are. Plans to give you. It's the thoughts he has towards you. They are for peace. Hallelujah. And to give you an expected end. That is why he says that your expectations shall not be cut short. That is why I don't understand when Christians start speaking of a... You know, you find a Christian saying, You know, life can end anyway. Tomorrow you can wake up and something has gone wrong and... Take heed. You might start well and not finish well. Of course, some people start well and they don't finish well. But I've realized that how you finish is a choice. <laughs> you might not be responsible for what you've been through all your life. The mother who begot you, the father who raised you, the school you went to, the university, the college, the dusty roads of Kampala. You might not be responsible for that. Hallelujah. But from the now experience to where you're going, you're responsible. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says he placed life and death before you. And he told you. He, he placed life and death before you. And he says choose. You have the opportunity to say I'm going to be happy all the way. And you have the opportunity to, to accept life and say ah for me. Uh, come what may, kesara, sera, whatever will be, will be. If I fail, I fail. If I don't fail, I don't fail. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, uh huh. Okay. <laughs> you see, that is why when Paul was praying for the church in Corinthians, he says, I pray that you, that you desire the best gifts. Okay? It's, it's that you covet the best gifts. It's okay to covet the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. To covet them. But he says, but, but you see, there is an excellent way. And that is the revelation of the love of God. When you understand how much God loves you. How much God loves you. The Bible says that he that withdrew not anything. I mean not his son from you. Will he not with him give you all things? He, he, he. What in this world is, more, is of more price than Jesus? Answer me. But the Bible says, He that spared not his own son, 
but the, give me the amplified of that. The amplified says, He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? All other things. Jesus is the guarantee that any other thing that you need in this life you will have in Jesus' name. Oh, you know, you preachers, you're always materialistic. You're thinking about being materialistic. No, 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 no. You see, not everybody is subject to the elements of material. Right? Me not loving mine doesn't mean I should be broke. So no, far from me, sakate, bro, zanda, zokete. Somebody shout hallelujah. Me not being attached to the good light, that mean I shouldn't have one, whether that if I have it, it becomes my God. Uh-uh. No, no. You can enjoy a good light, but still love God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I think that you love him for real. Somebody shout hallelujah. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And he loves me. If you understand the excellence of, of the love of God, agape, the love which is of God, if you understand how much God loves you, some of you would understand that he wishes for you more than you'll ever wish for yourself. Somebody say amen. And when I discovered that it's a choice to be happy or not to be, I chose. I chose. I told people, me, watch me. Even you can say it. <laughs> hey, I'm going to enjoy the life of salvation. Hallelujah. And I will win souls, yes. The sick will be healed. Devils will be cast out. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen. So I'm convinced of what the Lord has placed before me. And I'm convinced of the life that I've received in Jesus Christ. And there is nothing that had ever convinced me otherwise. Somebody say amen. Now back to Genesis. He is talking about power begetting rest. And rest finding grace. Because that's how it is. That's how it is. Grace finds men of rest. Somebody say amen. It doesn't find men of wax. It finds men of rest. You cannot find grace. When you are establishing yourself on wax. Let me go a bit deeper here. The teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a patterned life. How many of you believe that? We don't just preach the gospel. We don't just pray. We don't just fast. We don't just give. We don't just come here. You're not, you're not here by mistake. Are you following me? Let me show you something in Genesis. Genesis, chapter 29, verses 7. How many of you remember the story of Je Jacob? The Bible says, now I'm defining the church, okay? Something about the church. The Bible says, and he said, Lo, if it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together, water ye the sheep and go and feed them. In this instance, put in the back of your head that sheep represent you and I. The watering and the feeding of sheep. Okay? And the next verse says, And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. Sheep cannot be fed, they cannot be watered until... Until what? All of them are gathered. Somebody say amen. Now, when you read the translation of the word gathered there, it's the word asaf. And the word asaf borrows many meanings and one very interesting root of the very definition to gather a staff it also means to recover one from leprosy in matthew chapter 10 he tells us that when you go preaching this gospel you heal the sick you cleanse the lepers you raise the dead you cast out devils and he says freely ye have been what Given and freely shall ye give. Or freely have ye received, freely shall ye give. Now, if he separates the healing of the sick and the cleansing of the leper, it means that leprosy here represents something more deeper than just the sickness. Otherwise, 
Leprosy would have been carried along with the definition of healing the sick. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, sheep have to be cleansed of leprosy. Oh, go back again to the scripture. He says, when you go preaching, heal the sick, cleanse the leper. All of this is mandatory. If the gospel has to be preached as it ought, not as you think it should be, but as it ought according to truth. There is a place of cleansing the leper. Somebody say amen. And partly, it goes into the consecration of the officers, the fivefold what God has called the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist to be. What and how they perfect the saints for the work of ministry and edification of the body. But more than that, it defines the ranks of the spirit. It defines the place of ministration of the humility of grace versus the works of men. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Okay, let me show you one example. Miriam. The first leprous person in the scripture given is Miriam. How many of you know that? But how does Miriam become leprous? Miriam becomes leprous one time because, yes, there is a rule that you shall not marry outside your own what? Kinfolk. And Moses goes and gets a Kushite woman. You remember the story? And he loved the woman. And then Aaron and Miriam, the Bible says, spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Are you hearing me? He, they, 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 they spake against. But in the speaking against, if you remember Aaron and Miriam, they say, don't we hear God too? You understand? They exalted themselves. They, pra- they were overtaken by the pride of hearing God too. Somebody say amen. They, they, they exalted themselves in their own works. In their own ability, in what they were able to do. They said, give me the message of that. And they said, is it only through Moses that God speaks? Doesn't he also speak through us? Doesn't he also speak through us? Doesn't he speak through us? We're dealing with a Kushite woman here. They would have just said, ah, no, according to what is written, it is not right. No, no, no. But they went into a self-exaltation of what they could do, of who they are and the place they had before God. Oh, God speaks to most. Doesn't he speak to us too? So they established themselves in the righteousness of the fact that the Lord spoke to them and they felt that they were qualified enough to judge another man. And the Bible says, and the Lord had their talk. And he called them from the tent of meeting. You remember the story? And he asked them, who art thou? Why are you not afraid? Ooh-wee. Why are you not afraid? 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 When God tells a man, why are you not afraid? It means, even God knows that that's a place where a man has to be afraid. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. When God tells a man, why are you not afraid? It means God expects that man to be afraid at that particular point. At what point does Miriam and Aaron become so indifferent not to be afraid at the point when they ought to be afraid except that they cast their vision from who God is and what his ordinances are to their ability. And therefore they felt that they were qualified enough to judge the servant of God. And that's the part where the church has to cleanse the leper. On two grounds. One, that we disqualify works. Because many men qualify themselves according to works and not according to faith toward God. But number two also, that certain people don't know who to talk about and who not to talk about. Moses had a place with God. He says, when I speak to prophets, I speak to them through visions and dreams. But that's not so how I talk to my servant Moses. For he beholds the very countenance. My very countenance. I don't speak to him in riddles and dark sayings. Uh uh-uh. uh. He. The Bible says, if there be a prophet among you, right? Let's, let's go to the verse itself. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and I will speak to him in a dream. He says, My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. What qualified the faithfulness and servitude? Of Moses. One, 
The Bible says in the very numbers that he was the most humble man on earth. Most humble. Praise the Lord Jesus. Very meek. Above all men that were upon the face of the earth. So he's the man who went in the presence of God with humility. Of his inability and the ability of God. And there's a group of two guys here who are all boasting in their ability to hear. Are you seeing what I'm trying to say? Tell your neighbor pride goes before a fall. And God has a problem with them. Because if a, a man... Listen, I have learned this and I said it one time or twice. That if you receive communication through visions and dreams and you find a man who beholds the countenance, the very similar to the God, to whom he speaks face to face, without dark sayings. You, you can't lay a charge on such a man. Even if he appears wrong, mind your own business. If you feel concerned, don't be also indifferent. Pray for him if you like. Say, God, help this brother. Help this sister. You understand what I'm saying? You can pray for them. But never be found to point a finger to a person who you don't know the relationship they share with God. You, you do not even have a clue where she's coming from. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some people come from so far. Some people come from where? So far, so far with their God. With their God. Okay, that's another part of cleansing the what? <laughs> the lepers. Because there's a lot of leprosy in the church. A lot of young men and women who don't understand how to respect the ranks. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. There are things you should never do if you want to live long in the gospel. Again, the reconciliation of the heart and the vision. There are things you should never do in the gospel if you need to live longer and be a success in the gospel. There are certain people you should never touch if you want to live long in the gospel. You can pray for them. <laughs> but adventure the Lord comes to them and what? Restores them that they might recover themselves from the snares of the devil. For which they are taken captive at his own will. That's okay. Pray for them. You can pray for a person. If you don't understand the situation of the man and his God, pray for him. But the Christianity of our dispensation should not be found to point fingers on men. It should be found to recover men. It should be found to heal men. It should be found to look to the restoration of men. Regardless of how fallen a person is, there is still enough grace in this world to recover that man or woman. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And how be that some of these things, even people suffer, are part of the personal purpose. Even with God. I was sharing with somebody a couple of days ago. And I say, look at Peter. Jesus had the power to say, I have prayed for you that you don't fall into the sin that I see coming. But he said, no, but I, I, I prayed for you that your faith fail you not. He ignored the other thing. Well, I still don't know why God let Peter go through that. Praise the Lord Jesus. But there was a bigger picture that God had for Peter. Oh, and though he finished well. He finished serving the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know what it was that Peter suffered with. But whichever things Peter suffered with, he didn't finish with it. He didn't end with it. He ended with the Lord. Somebody say amen. I know that he shall perfect that which concerns me. He indeed that began, if he began this good work in your life, the Bible says he shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. Shout hallelujah. Now Miriam becomes proud. Even as God speaks to us. What happens? Leprosy hits her. The only thing that saved Aaron was because he had a what? A garment on his life. Otherwise Aaron was going to. That is why the scripture is clear. When the garment left Aaron, he fell dead. And it's also not a good thing to be kept by the garment on your life. <laughs> because purpose is temporal according to your physical existence. And you must plant seed eternal. 
Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. That is why we, we lay up ourselves what? Hey, hey, treasures. Somebody say amen. There are things we are doing physically that have very deep spiritual implications that will even go away beyond our physical existence. That is what is called ministering beyond yourself. You remember the psalmist saying, he says that when I was young, you showed your power and your great glory to me. He says, but now when I'm old, the Bible says, forsake me not, Lord, that until I shall reveal thine power to this generation and the generations to come. That even when I leave this place, I might become relevant. Even way long before or after I'm dead, I should be relevant. There's a reason why we are still quoting Psalms and Paul. Because they, they establish things in their lives that could go way beyond their existence in the flesh. Hallelujah. And if a man has to walk that grace and life, that man must understand the principles, the basic principles. That man must be cleansed from leprosy. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you know literally, God mentions Elijah, he mentions Elisha, he mentions all these guys. You understand? And a guy like Gehazi, who has seen power transferred from a man like Elijah to a man like Elijah, all he has to do is to serve the man of God. All he has to do. But what is he taken after? He's taken after the materialistic, right? He's consumed by the love of this world. And what happens? He was stricken with what? That's also another kind of leprosy. So when I'm talking about cleansing, we go deeper. The gospel is not for profit. You didn't get it. It is not a business transaction. You remember the scripture that says, when you go preaching, do not think that you have to put up a fundraising campaign before you start. Don't think, don't think that the gospel is about fundraising every time, fundraising. Do you understand? Do you know there are people, oh, to be continued, ta, ta, ta. <laughs> That's why we don't pressure you on giving. That's the reason only. Praise the Lord Jesus. It, there's a kind of leprosy that hits men who think, that the more numbers you see, the more... You know, some people read the count and they say, now here, okay. If everybody releases them, mutualo, mutualo, ta, 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 hmm, ha, uh, ha, uh, yeah, go. Okay, so those of you who... <laughs> Somebody said, hallelujah! It's a kind of leprosy too. When you start to look at the gospel like a fundraising scheme, like a source of what? Money. Do you know there's somebody who can come in a meeting and the first thing they say, ha, they sent a make a one over Nang. You know, that's the first thought because that's, that's how they think. <laughs> Praise God. They can't think how many souls are here. <laughs> how many sick people must be healed tonight? No, no. But the leprosy, ah, yeah. The leprosy is here. Oh, some of you tomorrow, some of you are already pastors. All tomorrow are going to become pastors. But don't put money above things. Don't move. Don't, don't, don't enter the gospel for fundraising. He shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I told the pastors, do your principles. You tithe. Pastor, tithe. Give your first fruit, pastor. First fruit. And let God handle the details. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let God handle your needs. But you are asking for what you're not giving. You have leprosy. Cleanse. Cleanse somebody. You have what? Leprosy. That's a man who has not understood grace. Eh? To be continued. That's for another day. So, leprosy comes in many ways. And he commanded us and told us, leprosy must be cleansed. It must be cleansed. It cannot be cleansed under a Levitical like it can be cleansed under the Melchizedek. That is why the story gives us of the ten lepers. You remember? And the Bible says Jesus tells them, go to the priest 
that they might pronounce you clean. And what happened? All of them went to the Levitical, except one man who turns back and comes back to the Melchizedek order. And the nine were healed. The one was made whole. Praise the Lord Jesus. He was made whole. And he says, this foreigner, this Samaritan, them is the nine were Jews. They were Israelites. They yielded more to the healing of the law than the wholeness of the priesthood. Eh? The wholeness of the priesthood. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. In fact, if you read how the Jews defined cleansing the leper according to the Levitical, it was not what the Levite did to heal you. It was the process by which the Levite checks you to make sure there is no more leprosy on you. And then he pronounces you clean. That is what they call cleansing. Cleansing was the pronunciation of checking a man and he's fallen without. It was not the wonder-working power of taking away. Somebody shout hallelujah. The taking away can only be done by Jesus. Somebody say amen. That's the one that makes whole. Now, back to what, what I was trying to give here. Before I go a bit deeper. The man of rest, which is Noah. The Bible says he found grace. As a result of power. Right? Lamech. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4. We which have believed do enter into rest. As he has said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. He says, we which have believed do enter into rest. So when a man believes, he enters into rest. And when a man enters into rest, he ceases from his own works. Now, many people think that when I talk about ceasing from works, it means that mm, you don't work. No. Seizing from works doesn't mean you don't work. Seizing from works means that you, the power and the spirit of grace starts to work through you. You, you, you. you get my point? There is a man who will not steal and then he will stand in front of the pulpit and start exalting himself and say, you know what? I refuse to steal. Sometimes even the people who teach us are the ones who take us there. Why do you think marriages are not working? Why do you think marriages are not working? Marriage. Marriage is a sacred grace. It is not in the instruction of what you must do. It's in the grace of what God must do through you. Because it's the idea of God. Oh, look at it. He says, for this reason, a man shall leave his own family, and then God joined to, to his what? Wife, and the two shall become one. And the Bible says, and this is the great mystery. He says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. That means that marriage, like you see a man and a woman, your relationship in a marriage relationship ought to be the way Christ relates to the church. Church, woman, Christ, man. You, you get my point? The way you treat your wife is exactly how Christ treats the church. How many of you understand that? Love your wives even as Christ has loved the church. That he gave himself for it. Well, likewise, women, submit unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Submit. The church is a submitted entity to the head of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the relationship between Christ and the church is the ministration of grace. By grace, i.e., not of your own. Least you should what? It is the what? Yes. It is the power of God that saves you. You're not saved by what you did last week. You're not even better today because of what you did yesterday. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Uh -uh. You're better today because of what he did in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, for by grace are ye saved through faith and not by yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Least any man should boast. You, you, have no, you have no place of boasting. I, sometimes I laugh at how some people talk. You know, I woke up one day and I said, ah, why don't I just become born again? So I what? Became born again. So I'm also appealing to you.
to be smart like me, to be wise like me, to be hair like me, says that you do exactly what I did. I, I made up my mind and I became... No, 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 no. Salvation is not a place where any man can boast. Not from its beginning, not the work and its end. You can't claim anything in the middle except faith. He says, why is our boasting? Saving. That's where we can boast and say, I believe. But even that faith is extended because of grace. It's not by works. That is why he has a problem with the Galatians. He says, you foolish Galatians. Who bewitched you? Jesus, the Bible says, was set before you crucified. Crucified. Give me the message version of that. Did someone put a hex on you? Have you taken leave of your senses? Something crazy has happened. For it is obvious that you no longer have the crucified Jesus in clear focus. You don't have him anymore in clear focus. His sacrifice on the cross was suddenly set before you clearly enough. And he says, next verse. Let me put this question to you. How did your new life begin? Was it by working your heads to please God? But that's what we are told. It's not what I do to please God. No, it's what He does through me. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's not what you do. It is what He does through you. And he says, how did your new life begin? Was it by working your heads off to please God? Or was it by responding to God's message? Oh, we're the sheep of his pasture. We simply responded to his love. Simply. It was a response. The power was the other side. It was calling us. It was attracting us. It was irresistible. And we found ourselves responding like a magnet. It wasn't in our power to go. It was in his love to draw us. For they cannot come, the Bible says, except he draw them. So some of you think, he opened his hands and said, come. And then you came. No. It was more than opening hands. The arms were open. But there was a magnet that drew you. It's called irresistible. Grace. There was a magnet. On your own, you could not say, okay, now he's here, I'm here, okay. Ah, come, okay, let me come. It's so good to be true. No, no. No. You didn't have the strength to. But he drew you. With his loving kindness. He drew you. With his mercy. He drew you. Now that he drew you into salvation, the same magnet is supposed to keep you. That is what he's dealing with in Galatians. He says, who bewitched you? Who bewitched you? He says, I put a question before you. He's asking now, verse 2. Was it by working your heads off? Or was it by responding God's message to you? Next verse. Are you going to continue? Paul calls it craziness. Man, Christians are crazy. They are working their heads to please God who is already pleased by the sacrifice. Oh, Jesus! He's pleased with me. Before I even do anything, he's pleased with me. God is happy with me. Because he doesn't see me through the lens of my works. He sees me through the lens of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time he looks at you, he sees Jesus. He sees Jesus. For in him, in him, in him you live, in him you move, and in him you have your being. Quit pleasing God. Yield to Him to work through you. The pleasing is automatic there. It won't be your work. No. It will be the wonder working of the Spirit of grace. That is why many of you are failing to please God because you're doing it in your own ability. So He says, are you going to continue with this craziness? For only crazy people would think they could complete by their own efforts What was begun by God? Did you hear that? If you weren't smart enough or strong enough to begin it, how do you suppose you could perfect it? How do you suppose you could perfect it? Next verse. Did you go through this whole painful learning process for nothing? He says it's not yet a total loss, but it certainly will be if you keep this up. 
Hallelujah. Answer this question. He's asking, does the God who say the word lavish, lavishly, provides you with his presence, his Holy Spirit, working things in your lives you could never do for yourself. Does he do these things because of your strenuous moral striving or because you trust him to do them in you? How does he do it? Exactly. God doesn't, let me tell you, God is not going to do a miracle now because I fasted. Yet I'm fasting, we're in fasting period. But he's not going to move because I fasted. Uh-uh. He's going to move because he has placed grace in me. Grace, the message. You understand what I'm saying? He distributes his spirit to you. Not because you did whatever I did, no. But because of him, who he is in you. You trusted him to do it in you. Where every time you begin your life by trusting everything. It's like when we go for crusades. Eh? You look at the need of people and you do not know how it's going to be filled by an individual. Somebody comes with, I don't know whether you remember uh, uh, a lady who came with a catheter. Was it a catheter? And a urine was in there, in a cavera, and the stomach was swollen. And they told her that she had about four or five swellings. And this woman is holding this thing. And you look at her and you're like, Mare what are we doing here? Hallelujah. But you see, what puts us on that altar and gives you grace and strength is the ability to know He is going to do it in me. I believe. Somebody say, I believe. Say again, I believe. You have to believe that He's going to do it in you. Oh, but I'm struggling with this issue. I'm struggling with that issue. Maybe you're struggling with it because for so long you've tried to work it. And it is failing every other day because by the flesh, by the law, no flesh shall be justified. Every time you go in the flesh to fix something, that is why some of you, every time you're trying to run out of something, you're worsening. Now, God, this time I am done. Hiya. Then you say, okay, now, eh? I got it wrong last time. This time I'm dedicating my life, you can call it an hour, to God. And then you start walking. Two, three days down the road, you hit shipwreck. And then you come back again and say, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it wrong. Let me see. What, here's the problem. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. You're restless. You're diseased. You're out of ease. You understand what I'm saying? That is why when they put you in hospital and you're sick, they say, this is a patient. <laughs> you become, pa- they, they cause you to become patient, to rest. <laughs> I cannot be sick. Why? Because I'm a man of rest. Do I have a witness? If you feel a headache. Just say, oh my God, headache, headache, panado, 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 ibrufen, ibrufen. No, no, no. Rakotele. Sabrozi katalando. Hushi patalaba. Brosekit. Kabrozi talaba ye. I'm resting in the love of God. The overwhelming grace of conviction. That he that began a good work in me, he sees it to accomplishment. He that became sin, he that knew no sin, became sin. That we being dead unto sins, might live unto righteousness. By his stripes I was healed. I'm not going to be healed tomorrow. The pain I'm feeling has nothing to do. It has no consequence on the finished work of Christ at the cross. And the truth that he has so evidently revealed in scripture, I rest. Then the head starts clearing. Patient. Be patient. You're anxious. Be patient. You're restless. You're diseased. 
That is why when somebody is so badly off, sometimes doctors do what they call an induced coma. They force you to rest. <laughs> now why should I wait for a doctor? Ay, 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 ay. No, no, no. Razo bokos. Talabaye. I rest myself. Say so somebody, I rest myself. Say it again and say, I rest my body, my soul and my spirit in what Jesus did. Oh. Oh. Rested men just don't fall sick. Foie. No. Because they are in rest. They are in rest. Boy, you are hypertensive. What makes you hyper? Refuse it. Rest your body in the name of Jesus. How can you be hyper? One time I was preaching around uh, Kampala Road. And a girl gets a panic attack. There. While I'm still preaching. Oh, 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 they get pepper. Oh, oh, oh. I, I looked at this thing. Before I cast it out, I had to first look at it to see how it works. Because it was the first time I saw a panic attack. i never seen it in my life. Oh, oh, oh. She starts breathing. So funny. And I'm like, what's that? That's a panic attack. I'm sorry. The Lord actually forgive me. I took a few more seconds to... to Understand how panic works. And the Lord forgive me. I repented. I observed. And then I came to this dear woman. I remember very well. And I said in the name of Jesus. You spirit. Go! And she did like, wow! And then she stood back and sat down like nothing had happened. <laughs> Tell somebody there is something inside me. Oh! Rest. There are things that might get you out of um, your, your comfort zones. Eh? Some news can come and shock you. Are you hearing me? But imagine a man who has lost his job, lost everything. And the guy goes on his bed and sleeps like a king. Imagine getting the worst news in the world. And you get on that bed like nothing has happened. Everybody's like, oh, what? what's wrong with you? That's why he calls it the peace that passes all. All. He didn't say some people. No. All. 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 Do you know what it means to get to a point where when they look at you, they don't see why you have peace. Because everything around you seems so messed up. But you have peace. You have peace. You have peace. That is a man who has believed. That is a man. Hey. No. Listen. Get to a point where you can get the worst news ever possible. And you smile over it. He said, what's up with you? I, I know God. I know God. Look at Noah. Let me show you a mystery. When you read the story of Noah, you realize the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thine house into the ark. God didn't tell Noah, Go and your house and family into the ark. He said, Come. That means, when God tells Noah, Pitch an ark. And Noah pitches an ark. You understand? Everything outside was going to be destroyed like we know it. And before anything, God gives Noah a vision. The man who found grace and is in rest. He gives him a vision of building this ark. And he builds it to the end, right? And when it is done, God enters the ark. Some people think in the floods, eh? God was watching. No, he wasn't. He was inside there. (laughs) In that situation, he's in with you. Come on. He's not watching it from afar. No. He's in there with you enjoying it all. He said, come. 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 And they both entered. When the flood hit, God is in the... That is why I'm trying to push theologians to revisit the whole definition of the 
places God has stubborn a cool. Because many people just know the physical places. But he was in the ark too. He was in the ark too. Now, let wind hit it. Let rain hit it. Let anything. You're in with a guy. Do you realize that the family of Noah was not saved because they were considered righteous? Amazingly, the Bible says, God found Noah righteous. He says, I have found thee righteous. You, Noah, you. You're the righteous one. Why have I found you righteous? Because in, thine, in the power, in the power you found rest. And because you found rest, you found grace. Literally, because Noah found grace, it was counted for him for righteousness. The law had not yet come. Faith existed. And grace existed by faith. So Noah had faith in God. You understand what I'm saying? There is nothing you're going in and through without the Lord. Some people think God is watching me. No. Those were songs. God is watching us. God is no longer watching us. He's in us. We are watching with him. <laughs> I don't know whether I have a witness. We are watching with him. We are with him. We are with him. He's in us. He's with us. He's for us. He cannot be against us. Hallelujah. That's why we have the mind of Christ. Because we are inside him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why when you read the Bible it becomes a mirror. And we behold. Like in a mirror. The glory of God. And we are metamorphosed. That is why. That is why. Because he has made the choice to live with you. Ooh, what a blessing. To know that now God lives in men. He lives in you. Somebody say he lives in me. He lives inside me. He tabernacles in my body. Somebody say amen. So. He's watching you as you're watching yourself. Because he's in you. You will not find grace to help until you learn to embrace the rest. Because it takes power to beget rest. Some people think otherwise. They think it contrary. They think the more aggressive you become, the more powerful you are known. Sometimes power is revealed when a man is resting in the midst of pressure. When a man has believed, he seizes from his own works. That is why it's the first place of repentance when a man is leaving the first principles, which be the oracles of God. He says, and therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. And when he's talking about a perfection, he says, not laying again the word there for perfection is maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from death. It was the first thing. Repentance from dead works. You have to change your mind from dead works. They are not dead because they are wrong. They are dead because they are in your own ability. You can never do right. You, even your best is, is still filthy rags. Your best. The Bible says man at his best is still what? It's still vanity. Man at his best. When you say, now let me be at my best without God. He's, he's of all vanity. When a man is at his best. Behold, you have made as my days as short hundreds and my lifetime is as nothing. You said, truly every man at his best is merely a breath. Selah. Think calmly of that. He's nothing. He's vanity. A man at his best. He is nothing. He is just a breath. Even at your best. Now you say, now... Today I'm not going to do anything wrong. You're still just a breath of air. You're nothing. You're vain. Hallelujah. That is why he sent us Jesus. That is why he gave us Jesus. That even at your worst, 
you can become best. What do you mean, apostle? Aren't you telling people to continue staying worse so they can... Eh, that's impure thought. You're thinking impurely. You know the Bible says to them that are pure, all things are? All things are pure. Even that statement to the man who is pure has created purity. But to you which is defiled and unbelieving, nothing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I have good news for you. Rest. Cease from your works. Stop allowing God to minister through you. To walk this life of salvation through you. When I get on the altar, I open my mouth and he fills it with good things. Hallelujah. When I'm laying hands on the sick, I do it with a conviction that it is the more conscious you are to this thing, the more it manifests in your life. Because your consciousness defines your place of meditation. Every day be awake to the ability of God working in you. There is power in knowing that it is not in your ability, but it is in his ability. So how can you judge another man if it's not in your ability to count yourself fair and better than him because he's not walking the way you are walking, therefore you think you're better than him. So what makes you better? Is it the decision you made to walk better or the fact that you simply believed on God, the same man God believes? You understand what I'm saying? Do you know how many people are working off their heads to move a God who already moved because they don't know that God moved already? Everything you need has been given. He said whether it's Paul or Apollos, whether things present or things to come. He says for all are yours and your Christ. Where we are in the labors of a finished work. We have entered where in have the men labored. All the men that have gone ahead of us have planted the seed and pasture of this message that God has already finished. Concerning his works, he has finished. There is power in knowing that all you have to do is rest and allow him to work through you. He does not desire anything from you. Only to believe. Some of you are struggling with letting God because you don't know how to let go of the steering wheel. You have always driven your life a certain way. And every time you let go, you feel like you're going to lose di direction. Sometimes that's why things are hardening the more. Because God is trying to take you to that corner to tell you, look, I don't care how much and how far you're going to do this thing. At the end of the day, you're going to have to let me take over. And when you do, you're going to enjoy the ride. Because I can't take you places. I'm not able to sustain you. Somebody say amen. That is why I know I have a good life. That is why I'm not worried about my future. Because the day I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I allowed Him. The day I understood the message of Jesus Christ, I rested and allowed Him. I no longer add my own strength in Him to His own working. And neither do I disqualify myself because I didn't do anything. I don't. I don't. Luveta Grace, I don't. Because there is nothing I know I can ever do enough to please a God who is already pleased with me. That's why he put the pleasing in the faith zone. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He didn't say without works. You might be in a situation where not everything is working as it should. Don't stop to believe that it will work out. Oh, but I'm imperfect. I'm not doing these things. I'm not walking the right way. Yes, you're not walking the right way. But that has not changed his mind toward you. I have good news for you. Oh, I, I think this will never happen because, you know, I've done this, I've done that. Oh, so now we are back again to you. Now, when was it about you? It's not about you. It's about him. Hallelujah. Cease from your works. When you start to say, oh, it's not going to happen because I did this, I did that. Oh, so then you're telling me that it's happened for another man because he did and did and did and did. And they contradicting scripture. It's not about what that man did or what you haven't done or what you have done or what he hasn't done. It's about how the man has believed in God. I'm a believer. Tell your neighbor, I'm a believer. Raise your hands and speak to God. Come on. It will work. 
That is why the Bible says we shall name him rest. For he shall deliver us from the curse of the land. Because the ground was cursed. And Noah was looked at as an answer to deliver the children of Israel from the curse. Curse is delivered of Israel because of rest. And rest because he believes. He found grace. The Bible says the Lord liked what he saw in Noah. The Lord likes what he sees in you. The Lord will work through you, in you, by you. He shall accomplish. You might not be there yet, but I have good news for you. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Don't. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care how fallen you have been. Don't stop believing that he that began a good work in you, he shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. That he is the author and the finisher of your faith. Be cleansed of leprosy. Be cleansed. Bible says, for I have washed them clean. I have cleansed them by the word. Right now as I was speaking, the Lord was cleansing consciences. He was cleansing very funny leprous spirits. He was cleansing indifference and unbelief. He was cleansing self-righteousness and dead works. He was cleansing human ability and self-righteousness. And we point to Jesus Christ, which is the author and the finisher of our faith. Somebody thank God for his love. Thank him. Day after day, forever faithful to me, always providing for me. Great is your mercy. Toward me, great is your grace. Great is your mercy, toward me. your loving kindness toward me. Your tender mercy I see Day after day Forever faithful To me Or is provided For me it is your mercy to me. Father, we receive your word. We take it in right now. It manifests through us to the deepest of our convictions and beings. This is the message of our time, but the message as old as eternity ever was. And thank you now that you've revealed it and your found us worthy to receive such truths. And by them, we have hope. By them, we have peace. By them, we have patience. By them, we have deliverance. In Jesus' mighty name. And all saints said, Amen. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, and you want to cease from your labors, and receive him tonight or if you're here and you received salvation in a works kind and you want to receive salvation the right way come here and I lead you through a confession prayer you know some people they think they are saved but they are not saved because they did not understand what Jesus did they were scared into the kingdom they were told, receive Jesus. He'll deliver you. He received Jesus. Your husband will come back. Then you receive Jesus. 
for the husband to come back. But she did not receive him because she understood. If you're that kind of person who has understood the gospel today, and you say, now today I've understood it. Now, now I want to take this one, which I've understood. Come quickly and receive Jesus. As it was me Turned me Tender mercy I see Day after day To me For it's provided For me Grant is your mercy Come and receive Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. Wow. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior because of problems, but not because of who He is, tonight receive Him because of who He is, because of what you've understood. And the devil is in trouble. The devil is in trouble. <laughs> Woo! You, can, you can spread that side. The devil is in trouble. You can spread that side. Or you can come closer. Wow. There's a butter in heaven. Apostle Paul is hitting him. He's hitting meat right now. <laughs> Woo! Please hurry. Come quickly. Come quickly. Hey, hey. You know, like I said, back in those days, the crusades we used to go to, they used to tell us, receive Jesus and get a man. <laughs> so some of you enter salvation to get men. When men don't come, you go back. Receive Jesus, you'll get, demons will leave you. But there is more than that. We though without a man are poor recourse. He is love eternal. His grace indescribable. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you through a prayer right now. Through a prayer right now. I want everyone quiet while we lead these wonderful people. Say Lord Jesus. Today. I have believed. It is not about me. It is not about what I do. It's not about my ability. It's about you and what you did on the cross at Calvary. Tonight, I receive you both as Lord and Savior. I cease from my works. I choose to believe you. In Jesus name Put up your hands Let me pray for you right now Receive the spirit Receive the spirit God is anointing you 
Pablo de Dios. Receive the Spirit. Receive the Spirit of God. Receive the Spirit of God. Receive the Spirit of God. Receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. Receive answered prayer in the name of Jesus. Receive freedom in the name of Jesus. Receive liberty. Start speaking in tongues right now. Receive, be filled. And let you start speaking in tongues as evidence. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is speaking in tongues. If you're there and you're sick, I want you to start receiving your healing. Somebody with a pain in a left kidney, God is healing you now. In the name of Jesus. God is healing people. Help me, Ashes. God is healing people. Somebody with an eye issue, God is healing your eye. You have not been seeing with your left eye. God is healing you. Somebody also with the right eye. Your, eye, your right eye. God is healing you. Another case of fibroids is being healed right now. Actually three of them. God is healing right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody had a swelling in your neck. God is healing you now in the name of Jesus. Disease is leaving. Even that which I have not mentioned. Oh, hypertension. High blood pressure. You're cast. Right now in the name of Jesus. Anybody suffering from high blood pressure? High blood pressure is leaving now. Diabetes. Live now. In the name of Jesus. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Finero, make manifest.